Poway firefighters and the Poway Padres, a gold medal Special Olympics softball team, joined together under the Friday night lights for the second annual Heroes softball game. Barry Cunningham and Matthew Murphy have been teammates for about five years. I just want to say thank you to the firefighters and all the people around the world for watching this. It's a good cause. Next year, if you guys have time, please come and support us. Such a fun game to watch, and the Poway Padres have been around more than 20 years. They started as a team of 12 and quickly grew to 70. In Poway, Lauren Coronado, NBC7. This is Heroes playing with Heroes, and our other heroes are our special needs athletes, the Poway Padres, who are just the heart and soul of our entire community. I'm not so sure there is a difference uh, in just the fact that um, one group's got some disabilities and one group doesn't. I think coaching is coaching and playing is playing and you're always coaching to a person's uh, maximum capability. And I think after that everything else is pretty much equal. Not, not a lot of difference uh, coaching to coaching. That's outstanding. That's a good team effort, wouldn't you say? Can you say, Jordan? Everybody filled it? Oh, that's outstanding. Okay, listen up real quick. I'm mic'd up right now. You can see. Oh, good Lord. And Brian, the camera dude, is out there in left field. <laughs> Brian! <laughs> How you doing, Brian? <laughs> I got a call at the end of the 2018 so season from Coach Tony. The team had just come off an incredible season winning every tournament they participated in. Being both a diehard baseball fan and totally intrigued by Tony's passion for the Poway Padres, I knew I couldn't miss out on this opportunity to document the team and their quest for repeat championships. Being the team mom of the Poway Padres is almost a full-time job. Uh, we have about 70 players on the roster and about 50-ish show up each practice. Oh, the road runners up. <laughs> the heat's on. On your mark. Get set. Go. Go, Tark, Woo! 3-1 for the road runner. So Tony nice. over 20 years ago was reading a note, an article in the newspaper. Um, in our local newspaper and um, saying that hey there's a group of guy people athletes that want to play and they don't have a coach looking for a little more balance in my life at that time i was working hard in my business and so i just felt a little out of balance and so in the spring of 98 i uh, just happened to see this article in the rb news and had a picture of players and i was kind of curious as to what that was all about so in reading the article I found out that uh, Nancy and Doug Greenwald were forming a team called Poway Padres and looking for a volunteer coach and uh, so I just for some reason decided to, even though I'd never coached special needs kids in athletics before, I just felt uh, kind of compelled to, or some, something down deep, said call the number and see what that's all about. He called me when, when he uh, took over the team and he said, hey, you want to uh, coach uh, special needs kids and I said sure and, and he said also could you could you bring some of your your baseball buddies I got a call one day from Gene saying hey my friend Tony Rubino is interested in coaching the Special Olympics team would you like to help and my sense was maybe it was temporary something until they could find a real coach and it ended up being 21 years What I took away from meeting with the Poway Padres is um, 
one, I'm getting emotional right now because my daughter's over here that you'll see in a minute, but you know, you kind of think when you have somebody with um, special needs, sorry, you have somebody with special needs, you know, the future is gone. You know, they're never gonna get married. They're never gonna do this or that. You see the Poway Padres and I always walk away thinking those kids are awesome. And then I realized some of the kids, some of those kids on the Poway Padres are my age. <laughs> is the kind of the glue that's held us all together and there's been many years where I've just been too busy where I didn't think I could devote more time and you talk to Tony and you get pumped up again for the next year and uh, he always kids me that uh, kids us that the pay's even better this year which is zero. <laughs> you can have a chess team which I doubt if he knows anything about it but if you needed a coach six months from now you have a real good chess team because he just he's just that's the way he's made. You know, and he doesn't need to have a dog in the fight. He's just, every, every kid is his dog in the fight. So, one of the most important things that we still work on today that Poway Padre guys will tell you about is uh, using two hands and fielding with two hands and teaching that fielding position was uh, critical. Oh yeah, I remember him like being somewhere out there. Like, yep, he never, he never let you get a hit. Yeah, I quickly learned that the Poway Padres are more than a softball team. Every time we filmed or were out in public with Coach Tony, we ran into a former player. Yeah. Oh. All right, well you do a good job on those weeds. Okay. Don't miss any of them. Bye. All right. Who is that? John Chris. He's, his mom was our first team mom and uh, yeah, John was our starting shortstop. Really, uh, really a good athlete. He's a uh, special, special people. And this was, you know, this just kind of reminds you of the gathering of players and different sizes, shapes, skills, abilities. To me, this represents just the joy of families getting together in a shade tree, spending time together. Coach Tony, I'm going to get teary, um, he is the heart and soul of this team. He is, um, he, he is the dad, he is the boss, he's the coach, he's the uh, driver. Um, if, if we need something and we let Coach Tony know, he's on it. He's a driving, huge driving force in the city and helping the special needs community. I'm gonna tell you, that's a great practice you guys just Thank had. You. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, you guys were dialed in and hustling and the running that you did down the first base is super, really. Your times were re way much better than last year. So I don't know, you're doing something right. I hope you're eating right. Excellent. Huh? Excellent. Hope you're eating right. Who's giving up the most sodas? So, all right, let's go in here. One, two, three, Poway Putters. One, two, three, Poway Putters! Nice cold towel right on the face. Just a great way to reflect on what a great what a great day I just had. He's more like a father figure to me since I barely see my dad. I I really like Coach Tony, like I, cause he's always there for me. Barry feels such a sense of unity with being on the Poway Padres, and it's it for him. It's been like a family affair. He these guys are his his family. They're the ones that if he's having a problem, he turns to. Where he works now, he works at a hospital where he's able to, you know, help other people, and he loves that. He, he's the best. He's the best on the west and the north and the south and the east, and he does a great job. We love him. As soon as I pay him, Barry, say yes, sir. There one minute. Uh, 
Hello, sir. Good afternoon. I'm good. How are you? Make sure I got my keys. How do you spell that? There you go, sir. Thank you, Barry. Some, a lot of our, my teammates take the game seriously. We're really competitive. Yeah. And you have to be really competitive and really, really a, a good listener to be on our team. And it's not easy being on a, on a team, on our team. Like the, sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't want to go to practice, but I have to. It's, it's how the Power Padres are. We, we sacrifice our afternoons to play what we love. I, I love playing softball. Like, I don't know, I, I'd be probably in my room being bored all day if I didn't have nothing to do on Sunday. I've always dreamed of going to the MLB, but like when I'm on the field, I feel like I'm playing for a, a major league team. How you shake the nerves? Uh, it's hard. <laughs> every every uh, first step that is nerve wracking to me. Um, well, first I take a deep breath and I go to the plate and I try to try to hit. You know, I I when I'm when I'm not playing and I'm trying to uh, going to the game, I I always say a little prayer before I, before I go play to make sure that I do well and a whole team does do well and I just hope to get on base every time but sometimes I get out and sometimes I get walked so it's how the game is so you have to play by the rules and if you get out you get out it's it's okay you have another chance I like getting dirty I like getting dirty because when when you get dirty you know that you played hard. When you don't get dirty, you didn't try too much. It, at times, Barry's the glue on the team in terms of emotional support and encouragement, recognizing the situation for what it is in the dugout. They always ask me, what's the score, coach, and during games, and I said, I'm not so sure, but let's just keep, you know, let's keep playing hard, doing our best, and we'll, we'll see at the end. And that's always the way we've tried to coach them is just do the best you can and, and the score will take care of itself because if we do the best we can and we don't score enough, okay, but at least we tried our best. Now we're playing Laguna first and then we're playing Riverside the second game. Who's going to be the hardest? Probably Laguna. Laguna's going to be the hardest. The Inland Empire Special Olympics Tournament is the first of the season. In order to advance to the championship game, Poway must win the first game against their rivals, Laguna. And if you throw four balls, Both teams have a storied past, with Poway beating Laguna in the championship the prior season. Prior to the first pitch, I found myself listening in on a heated debate over the strike zone between Coach Tony, the Laguna coach, and the umpire. We got a mat. Yeah. So what's the strike zone in your mind? Well, in my mind, the, the mat, if it hits the mat, it's a strike. That's the way I've always played softball, the mat and the plate. It's a strike. Any notion that both teams were here just to have a little fun quickly went out the window. These teams were here to compete and win. Normally we don't play with a mat and we play by height, the ball crossing the shoulder. Coach Tony knew this rule change would throw off his pitcher and hitters. So just like any big league coach, he was going to bat to advocate for his guys. So I know I, the rules are the rules, I'm not going to argue. But I mean, why I'll make- I'll show you, I'll get you a ball. No, I understand. <laughs> I'm just going to ask him, why they, why they make the damn mat this way to where it cuts around the plate? Why not just have it right here and screw it? It's got to have it a little vague so we can argue with the You know, it's a little I'm hoping that we, we have a chance against Laguna because they beat us last year in um, Poway. So we want, we want, we want revenge on them. Tyler. He's a really good pitcher. Um, he does a really good job at batting. And all I gotta say is the best of luck to him. What's key about Tyler is he just gets in a groove and 
stays really consistent and when you pitch in softball, that's what you're looking for. Are you kidding? I said, he, they, have regular, they have regular leagues here and they play the whole mat. I said, that's the whole purpose of the mat. Right away, this change in strike zone proved to be a challenge for Tyler to adapt to. I could see right away that Tyler was gonna be challenged in adapting to this. Coach Tony had prepared him for a strike zone that was framed between the batter's chest and knees, not a game where pitches were called balls and strikes based upon the ball hitting the mat behind the plate. I know he was getting frustrated and I could see the demeanor of the team being brought down by that and as well as the other team's enthusiasm going up. first inning or two of any of our games, it's critical to uh, keep the momentum on our side and not get too down. Good job, good job, good job, Ty. Good way to hang in there. I know that's a tough start. Come on, one, two, three, hit. One, two, three, hit! Come on, hit! Barry, you're up! His job is to get on base, and that's the best part about Barry. He doesn't get too anxious up there. Barry leads off the bottom of the first with a single line drive to center field, putting the team in a great position to get back some runs. With two runners on, Jonas smacked one into center, but unfortunately right into the fielder's glove. With two outs, Poway's back is up against the wall. They need Frankie to come through with a big hit to put some runs back on the board and get back into this game. Two outs, got it wrong. Good at bat, Frankie. Good at bat. That was it's okay. Don't worry. You got okay. two more. You got two more. Okay. Good job. Good job, guys. Good job. Going into the second, this new strike zone continued to give Tyler trouble. Right on that black plate, Ty. Any base now, guys. Frankie, touch the base and throw to first. You got a double play. Time blue! Time blue! Coach Tony saw the game starting to get out of reach and his hand was forced First to make base. a change. Okay. okay, good job. We'll switch it back. Reluctantly, I pulled him, but Tyler being Tyler, he just brushed it off. He didn't hang his head. Good job, Ty. The momentum of the game shifted at that point and uh, it was just fun to watch. Tyler shows a ton of character by recovering and making the final out of the inning to get Poway out of a major jam. Come here, come here, come here, come here. We know what we need. What you need to do is take pitches up there, make them hit that plate, okay? Yeah. Don't just swing at the first good one. Make them work. These guys are making our pitchers work. Make them work. You guys are making good plays. They're just making good hits. You guys can get good hits, okay? We need to hit a rally, guys. Come on. Come on, rally. To be in the dugout with these players during a game is, is quite an experience and, and a fun one from a coaching standpoint. They're starting to recognize that without a lot of prompting from the coaches and then start to cheer on one another. Come on, Jeff, we need this. 
when they start to see some good things go, happen, go. And go, then Sean. their enthusiasm rises, and then they start to perform at, at the best possible level they're able to, to play at. With Barry coming up, and as much as we've talked about his job is to get on first and get a runner, I was feeling pretty good that we were going to give it our best shot. No. I just kind of let him stay focused, not put too much pressure on him. He knew what his job was. And... Just like last time, Bear. Come on! Oh. Inning ending double play that Barry hit into was a disappointment, but the fact that he hit it so hard, the player made such a good play, and that ball could have just as well gone through, and his response to that is just indicative of his value to the team and not getting down, but staying up and cheering the team on and encouraging them no matter what the uh, results were. Come on in, guys. Come on in, guys. Come on in, guys. Good hustle. Good hustle. Good hustle, Matt. Good hustle, Frankie. Nice playing over there, dude. Good hustle, Scotty. Everybody hit. All right, this is our last up. In practice and in preparation for competition, we always talk about there's ups and downs. And that what we practice is encouraging one another when we have to work from behind. And this situation was one of those situations. And I think the fact that that was, uh, that is such an emphasis of Poway Padres of working together, sticking together, overcoming the ups and the downs, that this was, just fell into that kind of situation. And no matter what the outcome, I knew that the team was uh, prepared to do the best they could under these circumstances. How much time we got? Poway entered the final inning down three runs and the final chance to tie or win the game. In order to move on to the championship, they must win this game. With Jason leading off the bottom with a single through the gap at short, responsibility falls to the next man up. With two outs now in the final inning, Jonah comes up big with the liner to left center that pushes runners to second and third. With one out left, Frankie gets a bit underneath the ball and pops a routine fly to shallow center. But Powie gets a major break when the Laguna outfielder drops the ball and allows two runs to score, making it a one-run ball game. Up next is the guy Poway wants at bat in this situation. Let's rewind back to last year's championship, where Matt Murphy found himself in the same scenario. Two outs left in the final inning, and Poway down by one. Matt would hit a two-run walk-off homer to clinch the championship. So needless to say, Coach Tony and the guys are feeling confident. Matt is one player on the team that he's probably as hard on himself uh, as anybody, and I purposely don't uh, say a lot to him because he is focused, he's competitive, he knows what he wants to do. Go, 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 When this ball hit the ground and started travel like it did, all I could think of was he's going to do it again. See it go as far as it did and the opportunity for Matt to score was a thrill. 
And Matt does it again. He comes through with a two-run walk-off homer to send Powie to the championship. Take a seat, take a seat, take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. Guys, drinking plenty of water? Yes, yes. That's good. All right, all good. Tyler, I know we put him in a tough spot. He did great. Steven came in. Steven! Steven came in, covered Tyler's back, put Matt over it short, made the play. Now, who got the hit again? Who got the hit? Hey Matt, hey Matt, listen up. But guess who got on base? The guys in front of you did yeah. their job. Jason yeah. got on base. Everybody's doing their job. Frankie Del got on job base. We had to do what we had to do. What we had to do as a team, and that's what it was. We yeah. didn't quit till the end, did we? No. When I get on the field, I'm gonna play my 100% on the field. I want everyone to play 100% on the field. Who is Matt? Matt's a very gifted natural athlete but the best part of Matt is his heart his enthusiasm and his joy for being with his teammates he's the, probably the most vocal cheerleader in the dugout definitely has the most fun I work at Panera Bread I worked there uh, six years I clean the tables and I sell customer food. I do the coffees and I stock the um, lids and the cups. It's it's a hard it's a hard job, but I like it. Thank you. Hello, mom. Hello, dad. Hey, what's up? Nothing much. How are you doing? I'm good. How was work today? It was good. I got a call at like 12, 11 when I was working. Big Matt is coach. Hey, don't goof up on the filming today. I know Brian's coming over. I'm going to walk home with you. So have fun and uh, I hope you shave. I'll catch you. Bye. He, he's a funny coach. He call you a lot and check in on you? Yeah. Yeah. He wants to make sure I'm, I'm doing well and um, doing, uh, doing exercises and being healthy. I think I've been a Power Padres for five years or six years. If I wasn't in Power Padres, I would be um, mostly at home watching TV or playing video games. I won't be, I won't be doing this if I wasn't with the Power Padres. I think we got a call from Jody, Barry's mom. She mentioned that, oh, Matthew likes to play softball. Would he be interested in coming out and, you know, practicing with us? And I go, oh yeah, because there was a time that Matthew, um, once he aged out of high school, there wasn't really teams that, you know, sports teams that he could get involved with. As I talked with parents and got to know the team better, this early forced retirement from sport and competition became a common theme. For many of these players, the opportunities to participate in sport at a young age were abundant, but there eventually came a time when it was no longer safe or a good fit for them to play competitive team sports. And this reality often came sooner for them than their peers. The Poway Padres are unique in that it gives adults with special needs the opportunity to join a team, progress as one, and compete for championships. I wish that everybody played a, played a sport, what, no matter if it's softball, soccer, basketball, with the heart that these boys play this sport with. And girls. And girls, and girls. They go out and they play 100, give 110%. If something happens, they get upset, but then they all, you know, they pat each other on the back. It's okay, next time you know you'll do better. 
uh, I think a lot of um, professionals could learn something from these guys too out there because they just love the game. Yeah, game, game two at Paris was obviously a championship game for us and so we had played the Riverside Dodgers many times. They have one really outstanding player in their shortstop that hits a home run almost every time he's at bat. The championship game got off to a rocky start with Riverside star player mashing a grand slam out to left center. Once again, Poway found themselves behind and in need of runs to dig themselves out of an early inning Good job, hole. good job, good job, guys, good hustling. All right, we got plenty of time. Plenty of time. It was exciting to see Tyler step up again and blast a solo shot to left, narrowing the Riverside lead to two. Listen, dude, you're funny. You're a vacuum cleaner out there. Jonah is the newest member of the Poway Padres uh, and is really an exceptional athlete. As competition increases in these tournaments, it's important to have an outfielder that we can position against the better hitters. And in Jonah's case, he demonstrated that in Paris. He made some incredible catches. Jonah, you need a hat. Oh, Chris, you need a hat. I know where my hat is. In the top of the third, it looked like Riverside's star player just hit his second homer of the game. But Jonah came up big, robbing a sure dinger with a leaping catch at the wall. Poway entered the bottom of the third down by two, with Nick kicking off a massive run producing rally. Six runs later, and Nick finds himself again up to bat in the bottom of the third. Nick was one of the players who immediately stood out to me for his dedication to the team. All the Poway players have bought into Coach Tony's mantra of teamwork and picking up one another, but Nick fully embodied the selflessness of being a team player. He was always cheering for his guys, and I felt he truly got as much joy out of his team's success as his own. So when he stepped up to the plate and smacked the ball into the outfield and rounded the bases for a home run, I couldn't help but run to the dugout to celebrate with him. It felt amazing. I'm not like I'm not that kind of hitter sometimes, yeah. but it feels good to get those home runs once in a while. Back to back wins, baby! Yes. Woo yeah! Alright guys, hey, let's get the gear. Yeah, baby! Get your stuff, get your bags together. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, you guys, look. Gary, Sean, can you guys kneel down? Hey, Michael, let's kneel with Or kneel down. 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 Kneel down.
best part is dumping Gatorade on Coach. Um, because it's always a funny sight to see on video after we do it to him. Because it's the joy of us winning the whole thing. So I print out every roster of every Major League Baseball team and I fill in the lineups before the game and uh, I do it through the third inning because I want to eat. So I stop and then when I want to go back I can watch it on my DVRs and do it all. What game is that one? Those the Giants, the one that we were there for batting practice. So tell me. What is the drumstick club? Uh, okay, drumstick club is what Tony takes our all-star team to a Padre game. After the Padre game, we go to 7-Eleven and get our drumsticks. And I have the original card that Tony gave me when we first started the club. As long as you have this card and you're with Coach Steve or me, you're entitled to free drumsticks for the rest of your life, but you have to have the card. During the season, Coach Tony and the team were staples at San Diego Padre games. After the Inland Empire Championship, the Padres ownership surprised some of the guys with tickets and passes to attend batting practice before the game. Static moment right there. It was like right next to the field. I'm like, oh my God, is this like time of my life? I thought I was gonna, I thought I was a major league baseball player. Looking at these baseball players, I'm like, oh my God, they're so, they're so talented and so great. They work out so much that they have a gym, so. Oh, the crack of the bat sounded like wood uh, chopping down uh, trees. <laughs> and then Barry got a picture with Machado and sent it to me. <laughs> Chris Paddock on the mound for his 18th start of the year. And the 23 year old going against this Oriole team who's uh, hitting the ball and uh, pitching decently this month. Nice record at six and five. Okay, the first inning, the Padres um, got a base hit, uh, base on balls, and then something else happened, like, and a sack fly to score the first run. It's just a fun habit because I could go back and see what their batting average is throughout the whole season and all that. Ah, no way. There's Matthew. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Of course, he's high-fiving. No noon yet. That's sweet. On the ground to shortstop. Tatis will go to second, and that is that. Six to four on the force out. It will end the ball game, and the Padres win this one eight to one. As they pound out five homers in support of Chris Paddock. <laughs> Friday nights is I do water, helmet repairs, and uh, any blood, I tape them right back up and get back on the field. And it's only a two man crew right now. Learning about one, learning about two. Go, Ty! Go, Ty! Why do I do it? Because I love hanging around kids and they look up to me because I'm a legend at uh, school and they 
respect me. They respect my dad. They know how long my dad's been coaching. And it's like, this is how we get things done here at school on Friday nights. I have been a high school football coach for 32 years now. And Jason has always been with me from the time he was probably six years old on the sideline and uh, lives for Friday nights. Uh, can't wait for Friday nights to show up because he wants to get out there and compete. Come on! Oh, Jason's a competitor. He likes competition. It doesn't matter if it's his competition or volunteering on the football team competition. Um, he likes competition and he likes to win, but he's also learned how to lose, which is an important part of life. Oh my gosh, it has given him just so much to look forward to, to be with his friends, to compete, to... I can't even describe everything. What do you think? <laughs> there you go, up the middle, do the job. It's a really great opportunity for him to be a part of a team that he never had the chance to be a part of as he was growing up. Come on, Steve-O! Probably squishing the bug. You load, you, I mean, you get ready to load, you load, and you, you squish the back, the bug. He always tells me to squish the bug. Yeah. What does that do give you a little extra power? It gives you more power. I think I started in 1998, so I'm, I'm a veteran on this team. I'm a leader. How about the worst part about losing? I'm not, I'm not too sure about that one. You guys don't lose, right? No. We try our best not to lose. I'm here every Sunday just to watch Tony. <laughs> just joking. Uh, no, I come down to see Stephen play and see the other kids play. And I've always pushed baseball and basketball because I think it keeps kids out of, out of trouble. Good two hands, Steve-O. Uh, he's probably one of the longest that, that's been here and uh, we take the game serious. Uh, we just don't come out to throw a ball or swing a bat. Uh, we try to learn with every practice and with every game, and uh, the sun's not go always shine on every game, so uh, you gotta bounce back from the bad ones to the good ones, so. I'm liking it. All right, big muscles, get the big muscles going. Good job, Michael, good job, Michael. When we arrived in Fountain Valley for the final tournament of the season, there was a different feeling in the air. The tension was high. This was the final series of the season. I could sense the guys had put a lot of pressure on themselves, and the day was finally here to accomplish what they'd set out to do. I've been dreaming about this all night long. You're going into Paris was a little anxious because the players have been talking about a three-peat, and so I knew that there was going to be a little, uh, probably too much internal pressure from everybody. Perfect, Michael. Just don't get lazy. Nice. All right, I'm designated hitter. Tyler's hitting right after me. I am. Frankie's our cleanup man, and then Matt's gonna come up right behind him and start wailing. <laughs> Mike, come down here a second. I got something I wanna show you guys. I wanna share something with you. Really special. Got a special, special message from a Hall of Fame baseball player. Hey, Holly Padres, this is Ozzy Smith. And I just wanna wish you good luck with your chapter game tournament. I hear that you're going for a 3 team. 
It's important to give 100% support your teammates and remember, have fun. Go Poway Padres. Go Poway Padres, bro. Wow. Yeah. Similar to the Inland Empire Tournament, this series features a must-win play-in game, followed by the championship later in the day. Their opponent was familiar. They'd beaten Laguna previously this season at Inland Empire with Matt's incredible walk-off home run. With Laguna looking for a little revenge and Poway fighting for the chance of a three-peat, this game was sure to be competitive. Over the years, I've come to learn that uh, the first inning is really an important inning to at least get a couple of runs on the board because typically every inning runs are being scored and if you get shut out in an inning uh, then you just started to dig yourself a hole and I could sense that being the case when we went we went out one two three in that first inning in Fountain Valley and so I'm thinking okay we got our work cut out for us. <laughs> Come here, 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 come here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Sean, come on, hustle, come on. Jonah, hustle, come on. Hey, hustle, hustle, listen, 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 listen. What do we do best as Poway Padres? Work together. Work together, we encourage one another. That's first inning jitters, that's all it is. We're going to rip this time at bat. You need one. All right, guys. That's what the Poway Padres do is we pick one another up, all right? That's all we're doing. Hey. Remember, we've gone up, we've gone down, we've gone over the years, we've gone up and down, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What happens at the end? We do our best. Yes. Right, Nick? Here we go! Yeah! Going up. Yeah! Oh, keep running, keep going! Go back, go back, go back! Go back, go back! Get him Let's go! Let's, let's do this! Let's go! Come on! Need to get some out! Need to get some out! Come on, come on, come on, come on, hustle, Kevin. Come on, come on, come on. Doing great. You're doing great. Doing great. You're doing, doing great. great. All you guys are doing yeah. great. Listen up. Listen up. Come on, hustle in. Hustle in. Quick. Come on, Scotty. Come on, Jonah. Their yeah, hits are just falling positive. in. Oh, yeah. They're not, we're not making big mistakes. Their yeah. hits are falling in, yeah. just like ours will. Come on, let's go. One, two, three, Poway. One, two, three, three Poway.
Good at bats, good at bats, guys. Way to pick us up, way to pick it up. Way to pick it up, Steven. Way to pick it up, dude. After a great two-out rally, Poway has scrapped their way back into this game. Down one run, Matt finds himself in a familiar scenario. He gets his pitch, he loads, and mashes a line drive right into the mitt of the third baseman. Had that ball moved a foot in either direction, and it'd be at least a tie game. Unfortunately, Laguna would go on to drive in four more runs before Poway's last shot at the plate. Down by five, no one was ready to panic. They'd been here before and were prepared to give it their best shot. All right, Poway Padres, rocking and rolling. Remember, we come from behind many times, many times. Pick each other up. Yeah, Matt had last out. Jonah led off the first inning with a towering double to left center field, followed up with a single from Scotty that sent Jonah into score. That's the break we needed. That's the break we needed. He's on deck. Come on, Nick, you gotta get a good pitch in the eyeballs. After another single that moved Scotty to third, Nick grounds into a fielder's choice. With runners on first and second and with two outs, it's Michael's turn to bat. Michael loves the first pitch he sees and smacks a line drive between first and second. But Laguna's right fielder makes a spectacular leaping catch to end the game. Again, just a foot to the right or the left, and it's a different ball game. Keep your heads up. Hey, okay, you got a lot to be proud of. You played really well, okay? Their hits drop. Be good sportsmen over there. Say, good job, good job, good job. One, two, three, Laguna. One, two, three, Laguna! All right. Hey, keep your heads up. Now the, the initial uh, impact of losing at Fountain Valley was, was tough uh, on the players because they, to, to be able to say they three-peated was something that I knew they were really excited about being able to say. Uh, without doubt, it, it uh, stung for a little bit, but I just knew in the second game that the fact that the hits just didn't fall for us in the first game, I, I just knew we were just too good a team for that to happen two games in a row. Though Poway fell short of their third championship season, they still had the opportunity to compete for a bronze medal in the second game later that afternoon. And like Coach Tony predicted, this time the hits fell through and they walked away with a decisive 14-4 victory to secure a third place finish. What did we learn about the Poway Padres in this game? Strong. <laughs> what else? We came Together. Up on top. Yeah. Teamwork. Didn't work, I like that one. I know you got a little frustrated and a little down because we lost that other game, but the, what I want to see you guys do is pick yourself up, yep. Yep. okay? We can't win them all. Yeah, no. no. Can't win. Next week, see you at the banquet, have some fun there, celebrate Thank a great you, season. One, two, three. Hi, Padre! At the end of every season, Coach Tony and the team celebrate with a little pizza and bowling, followed by an awards ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. Can anybody learn anything? Yeah. What's the best part? Yeah. We had a roller coaster up and down. Roller coaster up and down? Okay. What about Frankie? What we learn as a team? Communication. Good. Work together. One way down. 
As I watched the season come to an end, I thought hard about what I experienced and what I thought the story of the Poway Padres was all about. Sure, this is a sports story, and it's certainly a film about adults with special needs. But for me, this is a story about a group of people coming together to participate in a shared love. It's a story about commitment and community. In many ways, it also feels like a story from the past. Today our lives are often dominated by work and stress. How often do we really live in a moment? How many of us actually put our heart into the activities that make us feel alive, that give us real joy? Every moment spent with the Poway Padres was a wake-up call. These guys play with heart, whether that's in a championship game or practicing their swing early on in spring training. They are a community. They're family. Inevitably, every year after our banquet ends, you know, everybody's saying goodbye and thanks, and a lot of the players will come up and say, oh, coach, when's the season start? I go, you know it starts in next August, and they all inevitably say, I wish it started tomorrow, and I always respond, I wish it did too. Coming home. 